Hello and welcome everyone. This is uh, the next episode of the Metacade Roundtable. Um, I'm very pleased to introduce Jonathan from OBS World, who we're going to talk about all things petrol heads, all things RWA, all things gaming. Um, thank you very much for joining us. As you know, the purpose of this podcast is to get a behind the scenes view of what it looks like to work at these businesses, how the individuals that we interview and, and introduce to our podcast have managed to get into that job. Um, so we always start there from a career point of view, and then we get into the detail of what OBS World is, the challenges that they face, and, and really the business that they're putting together very, very quickly. So first things first, Jonathan, welcome to your first Metacade podcast. How are you doing today? Thank you so much, Russell. I'm uh, super excited to be here today. So yeah, uh, let's get talking. <laughs> Excellent. So we were saying before we went live, we've done a few spaces. It's a bit different when you're on a podcast, suddenly you're here, um, you're there to be spoken to and, and a lot of questions be fired at you. So let's start with you and your background. It's always a good story to tell. Um, people in our community and, and wider communities are always interested in how do you get into this space? Like, what's everyone's journey? And every time we've done this, everyone's story is completely different. So um, would you like to do, give us a bit about your background, how you've ended up at OBS World, what your journey is to date, just so people can get an insight into how you've arrived at such a good business? Absolutely. Uh, first of all, thanks so much for having the time for uh, speaking to us today. Um, so my personal background, I personally always was very, very much in love with cars ever since a young age. Uh, this started, you know, from taking pictures from cars, supercars on the roads. And yeah, later that evolved to, you know, just hanging out with, with these communities myself. Um, I then later on, when I got a bit older, I, I very much got into technology. I always loved technology. I uh, had my own little digital agency for a while. And then my first ever job in Web3 uh, was basically back in 2017 when I got to work in a crypto to fiat payment gateway solution, um, which was pretty cool. They actually had uh, brick and mortar stores using their solution. Oh, wow. uh, unfortunately, that business uh, died because they ran out of funding, I guess. Um, Probably a bit too but early as well. Was, yeah, it was it was quite early, and I think you know it was difficult, you know, to get people on on track. You know, it's it's easier to work with people who already understand the technology uh, than having to convince people, you know, on having to use something completely new. Yeah, um, I guess that's something that we're also right now starting to see a lot. Uh, but we can talk about that a little bit later uh, about mm -hmm. the whole onboarding of users into Web three and stuff. Um, but yeah, later on, as I progressed, I, I, I got back. I always worked in, in, in kind of IT businesses. Um, and then my good family friends actually had a car community that uh, was founded about 15 years ago uh, that consisted of mainly private collectors, investors into, you know, very unique supercars and that would like to come together and, you know, speak about their passion, share this, uh, perhaps, you know, go on a Sunday drive. And over the last, you know, 15 years, that, that community very much grew, um, hosted over 50 different uh, events, such as rallies, track days. And this is, you know, really where that whole passion and, and, and community started coming from. Um, later on, we basically uh, created our own sim racing school. Um, for those who are unaware of sim racing, sim racing is like... Uh, basically having a steering wheel and pedals connected to yeah. a computer yeah. or a uh, PlayStation or a console. And with that, you can mimic like real world um, racing conditions. These are also yeah. the same machines that uh, Formula One drivers actually use to practice for their races. Yeah, yeah. It's full uh, great so... simulation, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and then basically in, 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 that, in that realm, we've done four years of international Steam racing championships where both amateur but as well professional esports teams have joined us. We've taken those winners to real track days. We've let them drive into our own cars to prove uh, to the world that yes, we can transfer virtual skills back into the real world. Mm -hmm. uh, very much so, like the um, <clears throat> excuse me, very much so like the Nissan GT Academy movie, which came out during the last year. Yeah. Um, 
And now, yeah, we have been building for the last two and a half years our whole ecosystem, our whole platform. So yeah, that's uh, um, that's a little bit of a, of a background, but yeah. Yeah, and how and, and your connection to getting into working with the company, um, was it through the friends and family connection with this group and, and OBS was this group or um, how did you finally take that step out of digital agency, technology businesses into crypto? So what was the turning point and, and who did you meet to get into OBS? Because if this is your passion and you, you're educated in innovation technology, from what I can see, this is like the perfect job for you, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. It's it's like a match made in heaven to be able to make yeah. these uh, two. Uh, it was actually kind of interesting because I was working on a on a bigger company in in, in a in a project that we were leading, and unfortunately, they were merging um, various different kinds of projects, so there were a lot of layoffs. And I was one of the people who, unfortunately, even my whole team got laid off. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that this was right at the time when the idea of building this metaverse and this ecosystem really started taking shape. And indeed, I was already connected to the car community here, let's say. So basically, uh, Dimitri and Andrews, the two co-founders, their brothers, they just reached out to me. They said, hey, we know that you have experience in IT as well and in, in community building. Oh, in Web3. Nice. So it was, the, it was the brothers that reached out to you. That's cool. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of, you know, how I how I slid in there. Um, yeah. And it was it was really cool. It's been a, it's been an amazing ride so far. Um, yeah. And yeah, yeah lo- lots going on, lots to talk about. I, I, I'm, like I say, I, I, I obviously we know you through our partnership at Metacade, um, and the kind of preparation and support we're going to offer once your token goes live later in the year, and um, and what you're building right now. But we've been on a couple of spaces as well, and the more and more I heard about it, and um, the more and more I looked into your white paper, um, if you know anything about our approach and our thinking we're very logical we're very like we want to build foundations sustainability we want to be around for a long time and that's um very different to the 95 percent of the other areas and projects in the space but um when i look at your your roadmap i look at your product line i look at the ecosystem um and then i look at your role which um at the moment, if you look in publicly, it's kind of community focused. But from our conversations, you're getting more involved in products. Um, and I think the next question naturally is like, when you're evolving such a new concept, um, the products that you produce will define you. Um, and community plays a huge role in that. So um, I know what it's like when we release new updates, new products, new ideas. You get your lovers, your haters, your in-betweens. You get some really good advice. Um, you just get sometimes a lot of personal opinion. Um, but that's the nature of a test group, which effectively a community is. It's that ability to build really good products for your users uh, by just listening. Um, how active has the community been at OBS to shape maybe the products that are already out in the market now or, or potentially coming out shortly? Um how involved is the community in shaping the direction in which OBS takes? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, we do have very much different audiences within within our community itself, and they each, you know, give feedback on various different kinds of topics. But overall, they have been very supportive, and we have used, you know, different kinds of tools to gain back their feedback, such as forms, um, doing live, you know, conversations with them. Uh, video calls and whatnot so we do we do have quite an active community in that sense um how are they involved they are directly involved in you know voting and kind of giving feedback on the app development because we do have our app live we have a beta so if you guys want to congratulations yeah (laughs) definitely um and even more so we are really looking forward to building basically um a tool in which, you know, even developers themselves can start jumping in and actually, you know, start working on various tasks and pushing, you know, to to a repo, getting rewards for that and, you know, seeing where that kind of leads. So we're really, really looking forward to, you know, finding more and more ways of making that involvement and also rewarding uh, even more intrinsic. 
Okay, fantastic. Is there a product or a part of your ecosystem that you would say has the community stamp all over it? You know, like that's the one they all really got involved in. So obviously your app is live. So I assume you're getting plenty of feedback and um, you're releasing various in upgrades and improvements to that. Is it the app? Is, is that where the community have been most focused so far? Um, I would say there is two things. Uh, as I spoke about those international sim racing championships, I would say there we have gotten a lot of feedback. Um, but definitely for the app, uh, it's been quite uh, overwhelming in some cases even. Uh, as you said, you definitely you know have both both sides of the coins. You have your lovers and your <laughs> haters. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's always it's always good, you know, to, to get to get that feedback because I guess um, your your customers or you know ultimately the ones that you have to listen to and that you're building a solution for, right? So hmm. yeah, agreed. And and this, talking about that, when when anyone's involved in products community, um, I've talked about this in articles on this podcast. Um, we we've never been in a situation where. We've had to really define our audiences or, or what you and I refer to as personas. And um, obviously, you have your investors, which are potentially more of your speculation audience that are buying the NFTs, will hopefully get involved with your token later in the year as well. Um, so you'll have your investment arm, you'll have your hour now enthusiasts that just want to be involved in the clubs, in the exposure. Um, so you have your, yeah, your, your car enthusiasts. But then because of the levels of your ecosystem, you've got like this real nice prestige level, which is um, I'm looking at the utility of your token, for example, and the NFTs and saying, right, I, I'm immediately thinking, what do I need to do to get to that next M F1 um, event? You know, so I, I think your, your term on your site is URL to IRL. I think that's one of the strap lines or sound bites you guys have. Um, but as a, as a kind of community lead, someone who's getting into product, You've got varying personas. Um, how many do you think you have, like, in terms of addressable market? Because um, for me, in this case, because it's a RWA, so a real-world asset opportunity, and it leans into the gaming and esports element, you've almost got this kind of tiered um, persona structure that you have to go after in all different ways. It's like probably slightly more complex than most businesses I talk to. But um, how many personas would you say you have if you were to kind of just summarize the audiences that you were looking to attract to OBS? It's definitely a drink of Absolutely. water time because that's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great question. No, um, all, very honestly, currently we have about five very well laid out personas, uh, which range you know, from... Uh, being a normal petrol head, being a crypto investor, being a mobile gamer, uh, being sim sim racing related, mm. uh, being being literally a coin flipper. Because I mean, ultimately, these kind of people also exist in the market, and you have to take them into account. Yeah. Um, so we have, you know, we have various different kinds of personas laid out right now, um, and I think that what's very what's very important as well to understand uh, in in the case of OBS world and, and our wider ecosystem is that we very much right now are targeting or will be targeting certain personas first of all because in our case it does not make sense to just try to target everybody at once because to capture all these different personas from these different smaller sub segments in the market, will be very difficult. Whereas yeah. if we and um, we can uh, strategize this very neatly in, in terms of which personas do we go uh, after first, how is our product lined up according to which uh, development phase. So this is kind of what we are doing right now. And we very much understand as well that like um, we have to work in this way. So we are currently focusing uh, more on the uh, game fi uh, segment. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. Um, they definitely it's definitely not a tack all at once. Um, I love the term coin flippers. I might I might steal that one. Uh, by the way, I tend to steal one liners from everyone we interview, so um, it just seems makes me more a bit more interesting after this. But uh, I like the term coin flippers. So the coin flippers are, are not really relevant from a persona until the token is launched in Q three onwards, etc. So um, right now, where is where is the biggest persona in your 
in your market. So it's in the ABS ecosystem, if you were to say like the bulk of our community is X, um, what are they right now? Where, where, where is your persona concentration kind of growing? I think that's a great, uh, another, another great question. I think what's been really, really cool to see is that over the last month uh, to even two months, we have seen a, a crazy increase actually in the numbers of our community, both in terms of just overall members, but as well in terms of engagement. Um, so in actually all user groups have been kind of growing. Uh, initially, we were very well known as, you know, being very much professional, uh, you know, sim racing community as well as real world uh people uh, as a car club uh, but now we can definitely see that our uh, younger generation of, of more gamers is, is mobile gamers let's say mm-hmm. is growing and this is also you know our our target audience um, I may as well explain at once why because mm-hmm. the bigger car manufacturers and car brands that we as well work with they as well understand that they have to nurture an audience from a very young age yes. to ultimately later be very true. able to you know, cater to those, not just by products, by, but also as well by experiences because brands are not just defined by a single product. When you talk about Apple, it's not just an iPhone. You have iCloud, you have Apple TV, yeah. you have the gaming section, you have iMessage, FaceTime, all of these different things which tie it in into one unified ecosystem. So that's a little bit yeah. uh, the same as we're doing. Yeah, I think um, that the best funnel or building future customers, um, definitely in, in esports and sim racing, is that if you if you pledge your allegiance to Porsche from an early age, there's no way your brain is not trained to want to buy a Porsche when you get to a certain age or a certain level of achievement in your life. And I and and I know that the Porsche is obviously one of your partners. Um, at OBS, um, a lot of our team were very happy about that as well. So, uh, but you're right; it's um, it's nurturing a, a far more wider, interested community. You're definitely going to do that through the gaming element, that's for sure. Um, and yeah, just and hopefully through natural appreciation, their successes, they become owners in these um, these clubs at the top end. So it's a real spectrum. It's a real challenge for you guys. And I think if we were to kind of conclude that line of questioning is like looking at the business right now and what you guys have built over the last um couple of years what's what is the single biggest challenge would you say what's the most common subject discussed internally um it's obviously not the token right now that's not out you're in a private sale round at the moment so these things are all challenges behind the scenes but um if we were to say like there's one thing standing in the way of OBS well succeeding in the space or not um what's what's the conversation internally is like what are you guys aware of and what challenge do you need to overcome to achieve your goals yeah I think that overall we have um first of all I want to give a shout out to to the whole team because I feel like the whole team has done an incredible job over the last you know Two and a half years of you know working in a very interesting market. As as we all know, it's been a very, oh, very interesting market. Rough, a lot of yeah. different things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> everyone's allowed the town the bear market. I think if they didn't know already. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we, um, we, 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 both businesses are definitely built in the toughest climate we could have, um we could have imagined. But I think the rewards are coming, which was good. So it's great to hear you shout out the team. Um, yeah, 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 100%. Uh, a lot of the challenges and, uh, you've probably already faced have probably already happened as well. Uh, that That's probably a good thing. I think, I think like overall, we have done a tremendous job uh, since we do have, you know, our beta live. People can actually download it. People can literally connect and start, you know, using our platform as of today um, and start getting involved. We do run a lot of, you know, um, challenges and giveaways as well so we love to give back as well to our community Um, but indeed the biggest challenge right now is i think just steering this ship now through the next stage which will be um you know finishing up our private sale and afterwards you know heading up to our towards our tge which at the same time yes is is a super super exciting job but i think 
as any business working within the Web3 space knows, that's definitely not an easy feat. It's not a, it's not a job that you pull off, you know, overnight. Um, and, and that's why I say I'm, I'm super glad that I'm proud of our team because we have been working towards this and now we are entering that next stage. So this is, you know, definitely our next biggest challenge. Yeah. And, and the TGE, um, I think the timing of your TGE will be incredibly important. And um, I think you, you mentioned it's going to be in, in probably in Q3. Um, we uh, Literally at the timing of this podcast, I did an AMA yesterday. Uh, and we're very much of the thought that the market will generally go fairly quiet and sideways for a couple of months now. So it's almost like we've all been building for the last 15 months, two and a half years. It's like get as much built as you possibly can, get as ready as you possibly can, because when the market switches and, and a lot of inflow comes in, it, it could be a really good time to to put the token out into the market. Also, just a few, just to warn you, it changes the whole dynamic of the business um, because you have this tradable asset that sits in the world every day, representing OBS. Is like it's, it's, it's mind blowing, really. It takes a little bit of time to get your head around, but um, yeah. But the, the, I'm looking at your utility um, and looking what the token is going to be used through. Again, having two and a half years, almost what three as you approach almost three years, and then putting a token out. The thought process is detailed. It's well constructed. It, you can see how it applies to your ecosystem. There's plenty of use cases um, that gives that token every chance of success. It's it's when you launch a token and then you're built. We did in our way. We launched conceptually and then built whilst the token was live. That's that's the boiler room. That's the pressure cooker um, that I probably wouldn't do again. Um, I would definitely probably partially build or, or maybe restructure things. But when you do things for the first time, you don't know. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, and hopefully the last time in that sense, we all want to build successful businesses and we want this to be our legacy. So, uh, no, that's great. Um, if anyone hasn't checked out OBS Worlds, it's on the Metacade platform. You need to go to their site, obsworld.io. Is there anything going on in the community right now? Is there any, um, obviously we'll get the, um, the app, app into our community so people are downloading it um is there any other um competitions anything going on in community right now that the guys should know about um we, we, which we can guide their absolutely. energy towards absolutely um this is a huge alpha guys but Ooh. i want to announce it we will be inviting one of our app users to join us to a track day a real world track day and that's going to take place in September. So if you Very want to nice. take part in that, all you have to do is just join our community, download our app, and be sure to hang around and check out our channels because our announcements is where, it's, uh, where it will be announced. Fantastic. Where, where's the track day? It's going to be our most favorite track, or at least one of my favorite tracks, and that's the yeah. Nürburgring in Germany. Oh, I was really hoping you were going to say that. Right, guys, start download the app. The, the office is now uh, in the process of downloading the app as we speak. Um, so in terms of summary, um, are you guys doing any events? Um, are you going to be um, any of the, the up-and-coming events, maybe like Gamescom in Cologne? Or um, where, where do you tend to... Have you done any events this year? Are you going to think plans that if people see you at the stand, they can come and say hello? Because since we've been doing these and events have been happening... We have had a little bit of feedback. Is like people have randomly come up to me and said, "Oh, I saw you on this podcast." Um, so yeah, you get that moment of fame for about ten seconds. So uh, where are you guys going to be no, in the next few months? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, we always try to join some of the biggest crypto conferences and gaming conferences in um, in the world. So we have joined Blockchain Week Dubai. That's where we you know we were super active and got to meet uh, actually a, a lot of our community as well, which was super nice. Um, right now, I think the next biggest event which we're gearing up to is going to be Token 2049 in Singapore. Uh, we will probably be hosting some side event there as well. So stay tuned as well for that information because mm -hmm. a lot, a lot of stuff is in the works. And yeah, just if you'll have our app, you'll be the first to know about everything that's being developed uh, alongside the product. Fantastic. Oh, that's great. So, the, so all the supercars floating down the highway in Dubai were the OBS OBS Worlds club members cars, yeah? 
you might see some stickers. You might see some stickers floating around. We do develop our own unique sticker packs. <laughs> oh, don't. This is where so I'm going to get the pressure. Of, I'm going to get the pressure of Medicaid now. People want stickers. They want to stick Medicaid on their cars. Yes. Like, yes, got yes, them a yes. shout out to Arnold. People and love to stick these. Yeah. We That's had a shout, actually. We, had, uh, we do some crazy car events always, and uh, people love these. These always fly outside of the door. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they do. T-shirts and sticker sets. I mean, every time I go to an event, I literally half pack. And uh, I think my family just walk around in like autonomous world T-shirts and OBS T-shirts. Like, what is this? Like, don't worry, it was free. <laughs> and my daughter just sticks all this, the stickers all over the house. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm fully versed in that. And we're getting a lot of pressure for a new range of merch and sticker sets as well. So I think this podcast has finally triggered that. So, uh uh, Jonathan, thank you so Love much it. for taking the time out with us today. Hopefully it hasn't been too painful for you, but uh, there's lots coming for OBS. I think a big Q3 for you guys. Um, a TG is always, if not the biggest event from a crypto perspective. Um, good timing as well if you're going to be in Token 2049 in Singapore. Um, that should be roughly around the time of the token going to market, and I'm sure the market will be in a much better position by then as well. So. Yeah, no, we'll be watching closely, supporting you all the way. Um, any final thoughts before we go? Um, this has been great today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Russell, and uh, the whole Metacade community. I really look forward to what we can do more. And perhaps we should, you know, send out some merch or something for the Metacade community. What do you think, Russell? Yeah, yeah. Oh, the, the stickers, 100%. Um, we'll get we'll get the teams talking and, um, yeah, we'll do a trade-off on merch. Yeah. Um, We'll probably awesome. drop an arc arcade machine into your community as well, which is pretty cool. There's some classic uh, racing games on there. There's about 2,000 games on these things. So, um, yeah, we'll definitely organize something as a giveaway into your community as well. Love it, love it, love it. All right, awesome. cheers. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. This has been Jonathan from OBS World, and this is the next episode of Metacade Roundtable. So we'll catch you guys real soon.